Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Apache Spark. Uh, so before we proceed, uh, first of all, I would like to give a quick introduction about myself, and then we will proceed with the discussion, folks. So folks, uh, my name is Mahesh. Uh, I have got extensive experience in big data domain across, what, across multiple industries. I have worked with uh, travel, airlines, security, networking, telecom, banking, and many other domains, many other industries, including oil and, oil and gas, uh, applying the big data analytics across different verticals. So I've been working in this industry like uh, since more than six years, specific to big data domain. And my core skill sets include basically the Hadoop and then the ecosystem technologies, Spark, and in fact, I'm as well a data miner using the Mahout and R kind of uh, machine learning tools. Okay, so that's a quick introduction about myself. I hope um, my versatile domain experience could uh, uh, help you all in terms of understanding the real world use cases and uh, uh, the big data domain itself. So I would, uh, uh, at the moment, I would like to quickly start with the discussion. So apologies for not taking your introductions uh, at this point in time. Okay. So in this quick uh, webinar today, now in this one hour discussion today, what are we going to learn? Uh, let's have a quick look at the agenda for today. Uh, first, we will try to understand what is Apache Spark, why there is a need for a new framework when already a prominent framework existing and solving industry problems for big data sets for example Hadoop. So why there is uh, another technology called as Apache Spark. So we'll try to understand that and then how Spark fits into Hadoop ecosystem. So is it, so many of you are, are a bit confused uh, or I personally interact with many new developers so basically they get confused whether Spark could replace Hadoop or whether it's uh, it's a complementary software along with the Hadoop. So let's have a quick look at uh, how actually Spark fits into Hadoop ecosystem. Then why Spark for big data analytics? Why specifically we need to choose or rely on big data analytics? So here uh, the topic will get more interesting. So that's where I try to explain you theoretically as well as try to show you certain examples which will help you out in clearly distinguishing between the classical way of processing the data on Hadoop versus the Spark. Then Spark's popularity. So some of the theoretical slides which basically gives you an idea on how the Spark uh, future looks like and if you really adopt this park from here onwards. So how would we, how would be your career path look like? So we'll try to understand that. And finally, uh, we'll try to run a specific uh, complex use case on top of uh, Spark, and then we'll try to understand how simple is it, it is to implement the code in Spark by solving a really complex use case. And we'll probably end our discussion at that point in time. So does that sound like a good plan for uh, for one hour discussion, folks? Just say yes or no, or even smiley should work. Excellent, okay. So I, I'm sure you guys are quite enthusiastic to go and uh, start discussion. Okay, so let's see. So here is the quick introduction about the Spark framework. So it basically talks about, uh, 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 it's a simple definition about the Apache Spark. By the way, it says that uh, Apache Spark is a general purpose data processing engine with in-memory computing. And then Spark provides API for Scala, Java, Python, 
and R, which makes Spark widely adopted for data processing requirements. So let's try to understand each one of these definitions in detail. So to start with, it says that Apache Spark is a general purpose data processing engine with in-memory computing capability. So what does it mean? Why am I referring to referring Spark as a general purpose data processing engine? So why am I calling it as an engine in the first place? So let's discuss a few points about that. So folks, so Spark is one of the very interesting frameworks available today in the big data ecosystem, which could work as a pluggable engine for multiple underlying data sources. You can plug and play Spark quite quickly with most of the underlying data sources available today. For example, one of the most prominent big data source is basically HDFS, Hadoop Distributed, Distributed File System. So you could easily integrate Spark with Hadoop and then quickly run your applications on top of Spark rather than depending on top or depending on Hadoop's map reduced directly. And as I mentioned, it supports multiple data sources. You could plug and play with additional data sources, for example, NoSQL databases like MongoDB or even Cassandra or many more data many more data, NoSQL databases available today. And it's not limited to NoSQL databases. Of course, you can even connect it with relational databases, for example, like MySQL, and you can analyze the data quite quickly compared to that of the primitive engines available to process the data in those uh, data sources. Okay, so we will try to understand why it's very fast. It's because Spark has got ability to process the data in memory. So that's the beauty of Spark. We'll go into the details in more in into more details in few other slides. So why I'm calling it as an in-memory computing system and how does it benefit for an end user or for the developer, at least in our point of view. Okay, so back in 2010, when I have been extensively working with uh, Hadoop by then, there were discussions about the in-memory processing frameworks for large data sets like, say, data, data residing on top of Hadoop. So if you ask my genuine opinion at that point in time I had was, I was really confused that whether is it really possible to process such massive data sets sitting on top of Hadoop with an in-memory processing system? Is it really true or is it going to happen? Even though there were a lot of discussions around that in 2010. Then I started finding out a technology called Spark somewhere in between 2011. So this framework has got a very interesting internal mechanism with which it could be able to load the data across the cluster of machines in memory and then process the data quite efficiently compared to that of the classic MapReduce programming paradigm. Okay, so there are too many uh, technical aspects now. So let's quickly move on and try to understand uh, each one of those definitions in detail. Okay, so before that, even Spark provides API for Scala, Java, Python, and even now with the latest releases in Spark like uh, 1.4, 1.5, Spark has built very efficient APIs, for example, data frames and some functions with which you could be able to easily leverage on the R functions and could run on top of Spark. So with the 
implementation of the data frames and some other functions which are built as part of the R module. So let's move further and try to understand that. So then Spark is intended to enhance, not replace the Hadoop stack. Okay, so before going further, so there are a few questions which I would like to take at this point in time and then we'll move forward. So Ganesh says, uh, I have, okay, so I think there are some specific questions related to their uh, working, their current situation. So I would like to address such questions at the end of the discussion, Ganesh, Gnaneshwar, sorry. And then Pavik says, Actually, in-memory computing system, most of the time we lost the processing data and so we can't validate our algorithm when developing a code. So how could we resolve this? Sure, so I will definitely address this question at the end of the discussion, Bhavik. So I'm, I'm not going to take questions which are not related to, to the context, so which could easily uh, disturb the session. But don't worry, I'll definitely help you out in answering those questions at the end of the discussion, okay? So Vijay says, how does learning Spark help senior QA professionals? Say the, okay. So I think uh, there are some very, very interesting questions from Bhavik and some others. So I will pick up such questions at the end of the discussion. So please bear with me till we finish our discussion, folks, okay? I'll give you maybe roughly about 15 to 20 minutes time to answer your questions. Okay, so Spark is intended to enhance, not replace the Hadoop stack. So this is very, very important and crucial statement to understand for all of you. It's because many of you, in fact, even in the forums, I continuously, I frequently interact where I see the questions related to whether Spark can replace Hadoop, which is totally wrong. Because Hadoop has caught its popularity. It's not only because of the MapReduce programming paradigm. It's mainly because of its underlying distributed file system which is the most stable open source technology available with us today, with which you could scale infinitely across any number of nodes over the cluster with the Hadoop distributed file system. And with the advent of generation two, a lot of things, a lot of issues have been resolved and it has become more stable and more scalable and many more features have been introduced, like for example, multi-tenancy. So Spark, on the other hand, does not have its own storage system as of today. So that's very, very important to understand. Spark is mainly designed to be a compute engine, which could easily be plugged any underlying data source and can process the data quite quickly and efficiently. So that's the whole idea behind the Spark framework. So then what is the purpose of, in, of actually moving on to Spark rather than uh, some of the components in Hadoop? So let's discuss about that. So folks, Many applications since like last, uh, I would say last decade, uh, have been implemented using Hadoop's MapReduce framework. So it went, it worked very well. Uh, it was quite efficient uh, and worked very well for large data sets. Because Hadoop was initially purely designed for batch processing applications and it fits very well with such kind of environment. But the growing number of communities on top of Hadoop, user communities on top of Hadoop, have started leveraging on Hadoop in different aspects. So they started treating Hadoop 
as a lambda architecture to process streaming data and then the batch processing data. They started considering Hadoop uh, for uh, real-time applications as well. So that's where the introduction of so many ecosystem technologies has come into picture and existence. Okay, so then the Sparks MapReduce on the other hand is quite high performance compute framework, computing framework as compared to that of the Hadoop's MapReduce directly. It's because the underlying implementation is entirely different the way it does the MapReduce. Spark also has got MapReduce. Hadoop by default has MapReduce framework. So both the implementations are entirely different. Conceptually, both of, the, both of them are same. Because of the underlying implementation is totally different, you could actually achieve high performance on top of the Spark. For certain applications, the performance of Spark could go beyond 100 times than that of the Hadoop MapReduce folks. So that's why even today I personally see many of the many of the companies they started totally replacing their existing Hadoop's MapReduce to Spark's MapReduce. Even though there are some consistency related issues which have been solved, which have been getting resolved quite quickly because of the number of user community support provided for Spark. Especially because of the performance the Spark map reduce yields. So Spark is designed to read. So in essence, so Spark map reduce is quite efficient and Spark is not only meant for map reduce, it has got some Another very interesting modules, which we'll be discussing in the moment, uh, which also makes Spark a more popular and widely adopted framework, are the future framework. Okay, so Spark is designed to read and write data to HDFS as well as other storage systems such as CSV files, Amazon S3, and NoSQL databases. So as we discussed, so it supports many underlying data sources. Okay. So what makes Spark suitable for big data analytics? So folks, if you consider uh, the classical Hadoop world, so basically you have, it, you have got the ability to process or analyze the data via MapReduce. But with the advent of generation two, with the introduction of ARN framework, which is said to be at another resource negotiator. So with the introduction of ARN framework, even though Hadoop opens up the channel for multiple types of applications to run on top of Hadoop, other than the MapReduce, MapReduce just become the part of uh, part of it. So it actually and actually allows you to run other types of workloads, like graph processing applications, or say streaming applications, or some messaging applications. So different types of applications are now supported on top of Hadoop, and makes Hadoop still to continue in the in the open source world. So, okay, so now that we have got AN, so now that AN allows you to run different types of applications on top of Hadoop, then why we are saying that Spark is suitable, is most suitable for big data analytics? It's, it has an interesting uh, discussion here. So Spark, is not only about MapReduce, folks. So keep in mind that Spark has got different modules which are packaged in a single framework called a Spark. So what are all those other modules which are actually packaged as part of the Spark? Spark MapReduce is by default, and then Spark's graphics, 
which allows you to write graph specific applications on top of Spark. Spark streaming module, which allows you to integrate streaming applications with Spark quite easily and efficiently. Even though there is slight difference between uh, other streaming applications and st Spark streaming module, which I will I'll, I'll, I'll discuss about that in a moment. So Spark streaming, Spark graphics, Spark MLlib, MLlib package is another uh, the most prominent framework nowadays because of the adoption and because of the number of algorithms being implemented in Spark's MLlib machine learning library package. So then finally last but not the least Spark SQL which allows SQL developers to quickly able to analyze the massive data set sitting on top of any data source via the Spark SQL quite quickly or quite efficiently. So these are different modules bundled together as a single framework. So how does it matter? So how do having an in place supporting all types of applications? On the other hand, Spark being a single framework, having all types of workloads integrated together, how does it matter to your developer, to your company? It's very, very crucial to understand. So folks, for you, you no need to learn multiple other frameworks lying around the Hadoop ecosystem. Just for example, if you want to do Spark SQL programming, or if you want to do graph analysis, if you want to do, if you want to apply most complex mathematical models, if you want to say, for instance, process the streaming data. So you no need to learn multiple technologies. You no need to worry about how to integrate those technologies with your Hadoop platform to be able to seamlessly work for you. So that's where Spark gains more, even more popularity. So you don't need to learn such different frameworks, rather you just learn single framework called a Spark. So you are done. So you, you could be able to run any of these types of workloads because of all these modules being bundled together as a single framework. So let's move on and see uh, some other aspects of Spark. So Spark simplifies data analysis. Uh, so we will see. So this is also very, very important to understand, folks. Why it simplifies data analysis? It's because the next couple of slides will give you a very good understanding on why it simplifies the data analysis. For example, Hadoop's MapReduce being the Java framework, you have to write tons of lines of code to implement a simple application in MapReduce, in Hadoop's MapReduce. On the other hand, Spark being implemented in Scala. Scala is the, is the language in which Spark framework has been built. It allows you to implement complex applications in very few lines of code, especially because of its scalable computing capabilities this color provides. So that's the key differentiator for Hadoop MapReduce and then the Sparks MapReduce. So I'll show you, uh, I'll show you practically how many lines of codes uh, are reduced while you implement the code in Spark. Then Spark provides built-in libraries to do advanced analytics. So it has got built-in machine learning library package, which has got implementation for different types of algorithms, like supervised learning techniques. It has got unsupervised learning techniques. It has got regression algorithms. It has got recommendation, information retrieval kind of algorithms. And this, 
and this package is growing quite quickly because of the number of uh, number of developers supporting that particular package and in fact today we have got support for R as well so not all the functions in R are supported in Spark but there are quite a number of functions which are most popular which are today supported in Spark where R okay so then Spark speaks more than one language so this in the first slide we have seen spark supports uh, java python and even spark and even scala so what does this mean to us basically so any developer development community may not need to learn a new technology to be able to implement the core on top of spark rather they can implement in their own well uh, well known technology for example say python if you are a python developer just don't worry just go ahead and implement your code in python via spark so if you are a java developer just go ahead and implement your code in java so if you are from scala background so just use scala so it has got multilingual support multi-language support okay so then Spark provides faster results. So why does Spark provides faster results? It's because uh, Spark basically is built around an interesting data structure called as RDD, Resilient Distributed Data Set. So this data structure, in fact, I would say most of this Spark components has been actually built around this data set, folks. This data structure, which actually allows you to load massive data set into memory with high reliability and with high efficiency as well. And a lot of other techniques actually follow that. So because of that because of the in-memory computing capability spark is quite efficient than that of any other frameworks and that spark allows you to use different hadoop vendors so as i mentioned spark is not just supporting apache hadoop so spark today supports multiple third-party vendors available over the market say mapper say cloudera say Hortonworks, even say Huawei distribution. So most of you may not be aware that there is something called as Huawei Hadoop's distribution, which is available in the market. So even Spark is supported in that uh, kind of distributions as well. Okay, so let's take a quick look about the first point which I discussed. So it is quite simple to implement code in Spark, why? Here is one slide, folks. So please have a, a quick look on the slide. Could you tell me how many lines of code has been written in this slide? Everyone on board. So this program is basically a word count program, which is a kind of hello world program for Hadoop MapReduce. So approximately you could imagine somewhere around like 40 to 50 lines of code has been implemented in this slide for Hadoop's MapReduce. The same functionality, the same program can be implemented in Spark. Let's see in how many number of lines in the next slide. So folks, the same program has been implemented in Spark just in three lines of code. If you look at the first three lines here, so this basically allows you to perform the word count operation in just three lines. Why is there such a drastic difference? It's one of the key reasons is mainly because of this color programming language. So as I already mentioned, Scala allows you to implement highly scalable code. And the development time required for implementing applications in Scala is 
quite quite less than compared to that of the Java programming language as such okay so here is you know a, a quick differentiation between uh, Hadoop's MapReduce versus the Spark's MapReduce folks. So this clearly processing data with Spark is much easier than MapReduce and Spark gives you the flexibility to choose your favorite language as well. So it is not really required for you to implement the code in only specific language, say Scala or Java. So you can actually switch over any type of language depending on how flexible you are in which type of language. So if you observe carefully, this slide, the top three lines over here, has been implemented in Scala, versus the down three lines have been implemented in Python. Okay, so what I will do at this point in time, so we have been t talking about uh, too many conceptual things. So I would like to show you practically uh, how Spark is more efficient than Hadoop's MapReduce. Just quickly, uh, I'll run a simple application, the same simple word count application on top of Hadoop versus on top of Scala. So let's have a quick look around that, folks. So what I'm going to do here, I'll quickly run my virtual machine and I'll show you the installation directory of Spark, or maybe I can skip that step. I can quickly start both the Hadoop and Spark clusters, and then run the WordCon program against both these frameworks, and we'll literally try to compare the performance between Hadoop's MapReduce versus Spark's MapReduce. Okay, I, I know there are plenty of questions uh, floating around. Uh, please apo please uh, accept my apologies, uh, all the slides, and then I'll give some time to you too. Ask your questions, so I'll, uh, I'll clarify your questions, folks, in a moment. Okay. So I'm just going into my Hadoop, so which is 2.4.1, and then I'll quickly start my Hadoop cluster. At the same time, I'll stop my, start my Spark cluster as well. Maybe I'll take another 10 to 15 minutes uh, to continue with the discussion, and then probably I'll give the rest of the time for the Q&A, folks. So I'm starting my Spark cluster now. My Hadoop cluster has already been started. So I can quickly check. I think almost all the services are running quite uh, successfully. I can see master worker, which are from Spark, and I can see the remaining services are from Hadoop. Okay, so let me quickly run uh, the WordCon program. So I hope everyone is comfortable with familiar with WordCon program, right? So basically WordCon program allows uh, you to count the words, I'm sorry, uh, to count the words from the given file, okay? So what I'm doing here is basically I'm running the Hadoop command, Hadoop jar, some wordcon.jar, and then here is my class which does the word count operation, just the same code I have just uh, put it on the slide, uh, and then uh, the, the input path and then the output path. So let me change my output paths to some other directory. So now I'm running this application to count the, to count the words. So output directory already exists, okay. No problem, let me take uh, another output directory. Excellent. So now my program has started running. 
uh, it just complained or it just shouted on me saying that uh, your output directory was already existing so please remove that directory so rather than removing my output directory I have, created, I have specified a new directory path I think which should suffice our needs so my mapper is my my mapper is successful 100% my reducer is about to start which is still running I can see it's still running my reducer also has been successfully executed so folks if you carefully notice how much time this application has taken to complete so it's basically this application started somewhere around uh, let's say somewhere around starting from 743 and it has completed at around like say 816 uh, which is like cumulate you how much time it took somewhere around 17 plus 16 say approximately 33 minutes 33 seconds to complete this job on Hadoop map reduce so let me try to run the same word code program in, in spark now and try to compare the performance okay so now spark Another beauty of Spark is basically it has got an interactive shell with which you could interactively run your applications. No need to run it remotely. You can interactively run your code and then quickly either learn or just debug your application, folks. Okay, it is beneficial for both of these, either for learning or for debugging your application. So now I launch that interactive shell. Okay, so with bin slash spark shell. Okay, so now it is launching the spark shell now. So once it is launched, I'll quickly run the program uh, for word count on spark. So in this case, uh, just bear in mind one thing, that uh, the data has been looked up from HDFS directly, and then the processing happens on Spark. Okay, so I'm going to just run three lines of code I have shown you previously, folks. Okay, so now that my Spark shell has been started successfully, so let me quickly run three lines of code. So first, I will load the data into something called as file RDD. So in order to load that, I'll just copy and paste the command. So my path is incorrect. So let me check my path here. So my path is basically this, MR test slash word count problem. Okay. So I'm running this code. So it just loaded the file and then uh, I'll run the other command which basically does the counting of the words. I'm not going to go into the details of this but I'll just quickly run the command folks. Okay so the word counts has been computed. Now I'll just quickly print those word counts onto the console. Okay, so now when I run this command, it basically starts the execution. So for Scala, basically you need to have a triggering point to kick off the project, uh, to kick off the application. So now this command basically starts the application and let's see how much time this is going to take. Okay, so essentially, if I carefully notice, even from the beginning, which says 11.52, Till the end 1157 so how many seconds it has taken folks approximately five seconds so this basically tells us practically that the the performance of spark map reduce is way higher than the Hadoop's map reduce framework maybe this is very very small so you might ask me why do you really care about 30 seconds versus say five seconds does it really impact anything in your from your side no but you should think 
about this in in the terms of highly scalable applications or high scale data sets where you're talking about terabytes then the amount of time taken will become quite significant to meet the service level agreements defined by your business users okay so again i don't want to actually leverage use too much of business terminology here here the intent is to show quickly the difference between these two frameworks okay so let me come back uh, quickly and uh, see what else is reminding for today okay so folks spark is blazingly fast we have seen that in fact here is an example uh, just have a quick look around the slide it says that using spark on 206 ec2 machines amazon elastic compute cloud machines we started who is that it is basically reynolds and committer or whatever pmc is from Apache spark co-founder of databricks so it's basically databricks was able to start databricks is basically uh, the key contributor behind the apache spark framework folks so they they are able to sort 100 terabytes of data on disk in 23 minutes. In comparison, the previous world record set by Hadoop's MapReduce used 2,100 versus 206 machines and took 72 minutes. So previously, Hadoop MapReduce took 72 minutes on 2,100 machines versus today's park took only 23 minutes which is maybe somewhere around uh, two by third of the time and look at the number of machines it is nowhere comparable maybe somewhere one by tenth i think less the note less than less than uh, less number of nodes this means that spark sorted the same data three times faster using 10 times fewer machines okay so that's uh, that's quite intuitive right and then um, spark sql so here are the different modules which we have already discussed spark has got different packages when spark sql which allows you to quickly run sql queries on top of hive so basically you know you, you just leverage on the hive metadata which is on hive metastore and then just runs the queries on top of on top of spark uh, through which you could analyze the hive data then uh, even hdfs data then mllib uh, basically allows you to run uh, any complex mathematical model quite quickly and efficiently even developers could be able to easily learn and uh, run the complex algorithms on massive data sets folks so you no need to be really a data scientist by nature but if you if at all you are just from development background still you are able to use those algorithms quite quickly so learning curve is quite uh, less uh, even in mllib then graphics which allows you to run the graph analysis on top of uh, spark then spark streaming so here is what i would like to differentiate between the original streaming applications between spark streaming so the quick difference is if you are talking about storm framework which is quite uh, well uh, quite familiar as the streaming application streaming framework yes it is true even today so at a sub second or even at a microsecond level you could process the data using spark streaming sorry um, my apologies with storm framework at a microsecond you could process the data the moment the record enters into the system you could analyze that record with storm framework but with spark streaming framework there is a slight different it be, which basically allows you to do streaming in mini batches the mini batch could be as less as 30 seconds or 15 seconds but still it is a mini batch system it's not a pure streaming application because folks bear in mind one thing there are many applications which require you to process the data at a microsecond level okay so that's the difference between spark streaming and uh, other streaming applications for example like uh, 
storm so then spark multi-language support uh, here are different languages in spark python java scholar sql and r so you can see the adoption of uh, these languages so basically scholar has got the higher adoption few questions i have seen which which languages got higher adoption 71 percent is is in scholar java is 31 percent and 58 percent is in python it basically depends on how many number of users are out there who wanted to use spark and then sql also then r as well so here is the fantastic slide throughout this ppt i like this slide the most because it gives a very detailed understanding on how spark has been uh, exploited today apache spark survey 2015 31% are still under evaluation phase that's really good folks for all of us because whoever want to step into spark framework say so yes just be assured that uh, your career is quite secure especially because of the adoption of the spark uh, today in the market and then 20 percent are planning to use spark already in 2015 13 percent are currently running spark in production they are very less so it's it's really good to us to know then 82 percent of users choose Spark to replace MapReduce, so that's already we discussed, and we have seen the difference. 70 percent, 67 percent of users need Spark for event stream processing. That's also a good point. You can see how how crucial it is to even support mini batch kind of application. Then 78 percent of users need faster processing of larger datasets. So that's quite intuitive as well. Then 62% of users load data into Spark with Hadoop distributed file system. So here are some more interesting topics like Scala is being adopted by 88%, Java by 44%, and Python by 22%. So the language is being used. So so this is very very interesting slide, folks. So just just go through this slide whenever you find time. Uh, you'll definitely get very good idea. So I no need to really like go through into each one of this. Okay, so Spark use cases. Different industries has got different applications for Spark, different usage scenarios for Spark. However, uh, Spark is used for resolving various problems like recommendations, then business intelligence and uh, fraud detection. So when I say recommendation, so basically Spark has been leveraged as a, a machine learning tool for analyzing large data sets. So that's one of the key applications via the machine learning library package. Business intelligence application. So basically if you have got visualization tools, for example, like say Tableau or say MicroStrategy or any other BI tool, basically you can easily integrate the BI tool with the Spark framework via Spark SQL or any other module. Fraud detection, so again, it's a machine learning specific use case. So here are uh, the adoption rate across uh, uh, different uh, techno domain uh, uh, aspects, so like others, recommendation systems, data warehousing as a data warehousing tool. BI tool, log processing, fraud detection, and then user facing services. So this is just like a static slide, so you guys can go through any point in time. Who is using Spark? So here is uh, the top list of Spark users. Don't worry, these are not the only users. There are plenty of them who are already been adopted to Spark, or at least trying to adopt to Spark. So Spark is here to stay uh, for a quite a long time so now the future is coming for spark the future is awaiting for spark so spark is not uh, one of those here today gone tomorrow spark is here to stay for for a significant amount of time and it, it is well worth to get your teeth into it uh, to in order to get some value out of your data so this is uh, this is in fact this is statement is very I would actually 100% I'll agree with the statement because with my experience, I personally travel uh, almost throughout the world. I even travel uh, within the IPAC region quite uh, uh, 
quite a number of times so i personally see many companies are really trying to adopt the spark framework folks okay so then spark uh, platform is really growing and here is the uh, some here is some information about it and then let's try to run a, a quick application on top of spark so before we actually wrap up our discussion uh, maybe i'll take just a couple of minutes not more than that uh, so folks what i'm trying to do basically is uh, uh, okay so otherwise i hope uh, that so this session basically gives you very good significant idea on uh, this park versus uh, the hadoop's map reduce so again taking uh, another program would be too heavy for today's discussion so let's devote this time for any q and a folks since we have already seen a practical example between spark and uh, hadoop okay so folks uh, so let me just quickly go through this uh, yeah i think probably i can take your questions now uh, so then i can just finish off the remaining just couple of slides So I have missed a few questions which has been posted previously. So please uh, try to post once again, folks. Okay. So Pranjal says, uh, prerequisite of uh, experience to go for Hadoop, Linux, Ubuntu knowledge, programming knowledge. What is there is no experience of programming at all. So that's a good question. Either, uh, see, both, I would say Hadoop and then both Spark, uh, really does not require you to you to have a, a very good programming skills as long as at least you are familiar with SQL skills and uh, the way the courses has been designed at Edureka is basically to they let you first familiar with the programming and then uh, and then we'll go about doing programming and then there are plenty of other modules like if you tell you're talking about hadoop there is pig and high framework which which does not require any programming skills in spark for example spark sql does not require any programming knowledge however spark course has been designed in such a way that uh, we'll have very fundamental programming uh, uh, sessions maybe for first two to three sessions will be dedicated for programming concepts where uh, we'll be discussing about the basics of programming and then we'll get into the actual sparks discussion which allows you to you know quickly adopt to spark Pranjal. so i hope your question is too big i hope in a way i have answered uh, part of it so i would like to discuss other questions as well Pranjal. i hope you understand that so then kiran says does Spark directly run on data on hdfs or it takes help of MapReduce? Now it directly runs the data on HDFS. It has got its own MapReduce Kiran. Okay, it does not leverage on Hadoop's MapReduce. Instead, it uses its own MapReduce, but it still uses an framework to run its MapReduce applications. Okay, does that answer your question? Samuel says, uh, since Hadoop is developed in Java, what about compatibility comfort? between MapReduce code and Scala code? Very good question. So Scala and Java both are like sister languages. Okay, so in Scala, you could actually use Java code. Okay, most of the APIs in Java can be used directly in Scala, Samuel, which we can discuss in the session. Okay, then uh, what are the prerequisites to learn Spark? Is development background necessary i hope i have already answered this question to pranjal i hope in a way that answers your question too so it's not mandatory to have pre programming language as a prerequisite however the course itself will help you to get familiar with the programming and then we'll do the programming in spark and and also we have got certain modules which does not at all require any programming experience so Chandra says, uh, Swarup says, how is Spark different from Hadoop? How is it Spark different from? Okay, so I hope I have already answered that question, Swarup. So 
Hadoop is basically uh, its core capability is on HDFS, Hadoop Distributed File System, and it also has got uh, MapReduce. But Spark being the compute engine, you just instead of using Hadoop's MapReduce, you will now leverage in Spark's MapReduce. And in Hadoop, for doing other type of applications, you have to leverage on other applications, uh, other frameworks. For example, for streaming, you have to go with Storm. Uh, for instance, for graph processing, you have to go with Giraffe. So different, different frameworks you have to learn and implement on top of Hadoop. But in Spark, everything is packaged as a single framework. So there is very, there is very less learning curve. Hope does not, uh, hope that answer your question. So then Satinarana says, I am new learner of Spark. Please suggest books. So books, yeah, I mean, probably uh, I can request the support team to share the books links to you, Satinarana. Okay. Mohan says, is Spark similar to SAP HANA? Uh, in memory technology. So they are not uh, really similar as such, at least in my point of view. I may not, I, I'm not very quite familiar with the SAP HANA implementation. I know how it works, but I'm not quite familiar with that underlying implementation details. However, that's a commercial tool and then Spark is an open source technology available for us today. Mohan. Then Anand says, are you going to take this park session? Yes, absolutely. Uh, myself and there are a couple of, um, are there are a few other faculties as well, Anand. Okay, if you are interested in mine, so probably you can actually request the support team. They could be able to assist you uh, when I'm going to start the session, okay? I hope you enjoyed today's discussion as well. <laughs> Then uh, Vinod says, can I try Spark on MySQL in Windows platform? Uh, you can try that, absolutely, Vinod. Then Raghavendra says, is Hadoop course a prerequisite for Spark? Not really. It's not really required to learn Hadoop before you learn Spark. They're standalone. Uh, in essence, in, in this course, uh, I'll give you, in fact, uh, some basics of Hadoop as well which actually help you to distinguish between Hadoop and Spark. Then Anand says, okay, then no. Uh, so I have already answered that. Arun says, I have 10 years of experience in Microsoft and want to switch to big data since I will be fresher. What will be the prospects in big data? So Arun, uh, if you're asking in terms of like uh, whether you are you, your fitment uh, to big data, I would say definitely, uh, you, uh, it will fit uh, for even the freshers, especially because big data world has just started. Um, even though I have been working since six years in big data domain, actually the traction towards the big data has been increased quite significantly since the last two years. And I see a lot of companies are trying to adapt to big data technologies for various reasons. So I'm sure, uh, in fact, the other reason, other main contributing factor is basically uh, the amount of data being generated in the next two decades will be very, very high. For example, with the introduction of IoT, Internet of Things, which is a major contributor for data and the amount of data being generated with the World Wide Web and your devices. So there are a lot more problems to be solved and at least for next two decades will be the drill will be for big data applications. So I'm sure uh, that uh, I hope that answers your question. And then Haryat says, sure. Uh, PowerPoint will be shared uh, from the support team Harinath. Ravi says, I think uh, we're already running out of time. Maybe another two to three minutes I'll take uh, regarding your questions. And then uh, probably I have to skip, drop the session, folks. Then Ravi says, uh, I'm in process of learning Hadoop and planning to move to Hadoop domain next year. As of now, I'm learning PIC framework. <laughs> I am looking at job descriptions and Spark with Scala is showing in many job descriptions. I am at Okay, so I'm basically Microsoft developer 
and uh, I thought Java will be new start for me for Hadoop. I want your advice what language will be good Scala versus Java. For me both are new, thank you. Okay, so if I try to break down, uh, I think uh, it's the right time for you to move to big data. Let's try uh, searching for jobs, maybe starting immediately. So who knows, maybe you can get into your role maybe within December also. So certain times, uh, I mean, it is quite possible that people could recruit even in December. So again, coming back to the other question, uh, since you are not from um, Java background, see Ravi, uh, I had to actually write code in C hash, uh, maybe like uh, last two weeks back, uh, coincidentally. So I'm from Java background, like since my day one, or even before my career has actually started. I did not see much difference between C hash and Java. It's true that uh, it's quite similar. At least, uh, at a, vaguely I can answer that, that both of them looks alike to me. And even when I write applications in other languages, even I write programs in Python, I feel like as long as you're comfortable in logical thinking, uh, language is just a, a mater immaterial for you. You just have to understand the syntax, that's it. But again, coming back to your specific question, C hash and Java looks pretty much alike and I don't find difficulties in adopting to these two technologies. So I, I'm sure that you would be able to quickly learn Java if you are from C hash development background. And on the other hand, Scala versus Java, so since you're already learning Hadoop, just continue with Java, just get some uh, hands-on experience on Java. If you come for Spark, it is my responsibility to make you familiar with the Scala. Okay, Ravi, does that answer the questions? Then Piyu says, okay, so I want to start my career in analytics. I'm new in this, in this, this, in, in this industry. So please suggest me, shall I proceed learning R language or analytics or shall I start learning Scala? Okay, so analytics. So what do you mean by analytics? So there are different aspects to it. If you are talking in terms of SQL, SQL based analytics, uh, so you can actually go with Spark SQL and if you are good with SQL background, then that's fine. If you want to do most complex, like uh, if complex analytics via mathematical modeling and all, statistical analysis, then is you have to learn uh, Scala, uh, if at all you want to leverage on uh, Spark. So Spark has got ML package, which allows you to run most complex algorithms. So there are plenty of algorithms around there, which are, I mean, the most popular algorithms are already available in, in Spark. So which you could uh, be able to quickly learn. It's, it's not a big deal. And then R is R is like uh, I don't want to really compare R with any other language because R is one of my favorite uh, static statistical tools, and uh, the maturity of R is quite quite uh, higher than any other open source technology, at least in my perspective, in big data domain. So uh, R is a different story altogether. So if you really want to become a, a, a statistician, I would uh, suggest you to go continue with R and then learn Spark as well, if you are interested in running uh, models on large data sets. Okay? And then Shabri says, which programming language would be used in the session? It's Scala, Shabri. And Scala is a more prominent language for uh, implementing Spark code. Okay, so I think we're already out of time. Maybe I'll take a couple of questions. So my apologies if I couldn't take others' questions. I hope you guys understand because of the limited time we have got and then there are there were around like 66 folks on the call. So I hope you understand that. So Samuel says, do we need to complete the Hadoop admin and Hadoop developer course before taking this Spark course? No, it's not required, Samuel. Spark is a standalone framework. I can, uh, uh, I mean, uh, if, if it's, it's our responsibility to basically get you equipped with Spark. 
directly so it's not hadoop is not mandatory Ganeshwar says i have a 16 gig ram and i want to process 500 gb data how spark can do that in memory processing that's a good question to answer your question uh, quickly quick and dirty way it's basically goes in iterations uh, Naneshwar. So most of the real world applications are like that, not only ears. So where basically Spark goes in iterations, where it actually does the discrete and processes the data depending on the amount of memory it have. Okay, so I hope that's pretty much it for today. Uh, so folks, I hope you guys have enjoyed today's discussion. So here are just a couple of slides. So just references, just go through these links. And then here is the survey feedback. So your survey feedback is quite essential for us to rectify ourselves, uh, to adopt, to or to fine tune uh, specific to your needs. Okay, so then course details. So folks, uh, here are the course details. and probably the upcoming batches are will be starting quite soon so get in touch with the support team they should be able to assist you support team you could reach out at spark at edureka.co or support at edureka.co so thanks for joining today's discussion folks thanks for your valuable time uh, to join the webinar okay. so have a good night and have a nice day bye to all of you